Hey guys, uh, I'm going to talk about analogies in this video. First of all, there are many ways to communicate science, and one way to communicate science is using models, like this model of a cell. This is not an actual cell, believe it or not. Oops, I just dropped one. But this is a model. So models help us visualize what the actual thing looks like without having to see the actual thing because it's you need to have a microscope, a certain amount of magnification in order to see the actual thing. Um, another way to communicate science is by the use of analogies. So an analogy is something that is an example which is very similar or could be thought of as very similar as what you're trying to communicate. So in this picture that I have on your screen, you can see an eyeball. And this is an eyeball. Uh, and this is the analogy. So there's your eyeball. That's the real thing. And when you're trying to communicate any scientific concept to people who don't know anything about it, um, it's very, very powerful to use an analogy because you're bridging the gap between something that they don't know to something that they do know. So you start with something they know and that makes it easier for them to understand the thing that they don't know. You could start off by saying, oh, this is the eye and this is the retina, but uh, a good way to communicate uh, what the eye does is by thinking of a camera in this case. So the camera is the analogy. Uh, another way to put it is the camera is the analog, which is the noun uh, uh, for analogy. So this is the analog. So how does it match up in terms of the different parts and what they do? Well, if you first of all take a look at the cornea of the eye, the cornea will be like the outer cover of the camera because that's where the light goes into the camera first. Um, and the outer piece of um, glass actually does some of the focusing on a camera as well as on the cornea. So structurally, they're very similar because that's the first thing that light's going to go through, but also functionally, they're similar as well. Then you've got a pupil, and on the camera, you've got an aperture. When you adjust the aperture, you're adjusting the size of the pupil. Um, and so the aperture is actually like this um, muscle here in the iris that actually contracts and opens up to allow more light in or less light in. So these are very similar. The lens in the, the eyeball is very similar to a lens in the camera because both of them can adjust how much uh, light uh, is focused. And, and that way you can focus on certain things at certain distances. I mean, there's differences because our lens is far more powerful. It can reshape itself, whereas the camera lens or sometimes it's a series of lenses have to change um, how far apart they are in order to focus. But they have the similar function. So this is why these uh, two are analogous to each other. Then you've got the uh, vitreous humor, or maybe you can even say the sclera is similar to the, the camera body. And then the retina is very similar to film. Or in a digital camera, it'd be what's called the CCD. Um, a bunch of... Um, uh, a bunch of things back there that actually capture the light and turn it into electrical impulses or digital signals uh, to be recorded. <clears throat> In this case, we have a film camera, so the film actually captures, captures the light and makes a picture. So here you can see this is a, a very good analogy, an eyeball and a, a camera. So the camera is the analog. So when you're thinking about what's analogous to a cell, what is the analog to a cell? Think about all the different organelles in the cell and how each one is just like uh, whatever the analogy is, just like we did with the eye and the camera. Um, so if you say, oh, an eyeball is like a Rubik's cube, well, that's going to be very difficult to justify because what on earth in a Rubik's cube is similar to an eye? Almost nothing. So you have to find something that has parts that have similar functions or that you can justify as having similar functions.